A lot of you took issue with my last projector review, but like the Goonies, I'm not going to give up that easy. I'm going all out this time with a new screen and Samsung's top of the line ultra short throw projector, the Premier 130, to see if maybe, just maybe, I was wrong about home projection in 2022. <laughs> The Premier 130 is Samsung's top-of-the-line 4K ultra-short throw projector that features triple laser light technology that, according to Samsung, is good for up to 2,800 lumens of light output, not to mention HDR10 Plus certification, which is a first for a projector. The aptly named 130 can project a 130-inch diagonal image from about 9 inches away from your projection screen or wall. While the Premier can bring the theater experience to any room, it's not exactly a plug-and-play one. There's marketing materials and then there is reality. Can you enjoy a watchable image in ambient light when you pair the 130 with an ambient light rejecting screen, such as the WiMAX seen here? Yes, yes you can, but I wouldn't say it's the same experience as having an LED or an OLED. And this idea that you can enjoy a 130 inch image from nine inches away isn't exactly true either, unless you're okay with watching a movie near your ceiling. Now, to be fair, Samsung is not the only guilty party to over-exaggerate the simplicity of their setup. They, like other brands, often forget to mention another important measurement, vertical throw. Vertical throw is the distance from the projector itself to the bottom of the image. This distance can make placement of these types of projectors tricky. For example, let's say you have a cabinet that is 30 inches tall. The bottom of the Samsung's projected image would start then around 46 inches from the floor. Now consider that a 100 inch screen is approximately 50 inches tall. This means if your ceiling height is anything less than 12 feet, you aren't watching a 100 inch projected image, never mind a 130 inch diagonal one. And I don't have to tell you that 12 foot ceilings aren't super common in the average house or apartment. Even in our large room, I had to place the Samsung directly on the floor because even our ultra low profile concrete benches were too tall. Placed atop the benches, the 100 inch image bled onto our ceiling. Now, thankfully, our benches hide the unit sitting on the floor, along with all of the cables. And to be clear, I'm not saying this setup doesn't work. It did, and the results were even impressive. But it is important to manage your expectations because these projectors take some work to get just right and may not be the easy alternative to big screen TVs the online marketing images portray. They are just as finicky as traditional projectors, if not more so. So with that, the more you know disclaimer out of the way, Let's really dive into the Premiere. Before I jump into any measurements and results, know that your room, your choice in screen, and ambient lighting conditions are all going to play a role in any projector's figures before and after calibration. For example, our new screen has a negative gain of 0.6. This means that our light output figures are going to be roughly 40% less than what we might measure if we had a unity gain or positive gain screen. And we went with the negative gain screen to achieve better black levels, contrast, and clarity when viewing in ambient light, something projectors like the Samsung advertise you can do. Also, a lot of ultra short throw screens result in color shifts on their own, which is why when it comes to projectors, you should calibrate them. A full calibration will eliminate any issues that are the fault of your room or screen so that you get the most accurate image in the end. Out of the box, I wouldn't call the Premiere calibrated, though it is admittedly more accurate than LG's latest crop of Cinebeam projectors. Our projector powered up in the standard picture profile and had an overall Delta E or margin of error of 17, with both color and grayscale favoring blue, resulting in a cooler image. For those of you unfamiliar with this measurement, a Delta E of three or less is considered calibrated. The dynamic profile produced similar results. Movie and Filmmaker were the most accurate of the four profiles, both having a margin of error of 16 and appearing less blue. The good news is, is that the Samsung can be calibrated and calibrated quite easily. Using the stock Filmmaker profile as my baseline, I changed the color temperature to warm one and improved the projector's accuracy quite a bit, but not so much as to be considered technically calibrated, but it helped a lot. Using my meter and display cal, I was able to calibrate the Filmmaker and standard profiles to 
perfection, each with a delta E of 2.2, which is really good for a projector in my opinion. So within its class of projectors, and based on my own personal experience, the Samsung appears to be one of, if not the best, ultra short throw projectors on the market right now. If you aren't planning on fully calibrating your projector, I recommend using either the movie or filmmaker profiles and switching the color temperature to warm one and just enjoy the show. Just know that the second you switch from standard to movie or filmmaker and engage the color temperature to warm one, you will experience a drop in light output. It's not enough to make the Samsung unwatchable in ambient light conditions, but I wouldn't be surprised if for daytime viewing, you go with standard or dynamic and for serious viewing. Once the sun goes down, you switch over to filmmaker. All of the technical stuff aside, I love the picture from this projector, especially post calibration. The colors are brilliant, if not just a little oversaturated here and there. Whatever the color space, the Samsung delivers the goods with terrific accuracy and color contrast. And speaking of contrast for a projector, overall, it's superb, better than what you're going to find with LG's Cinebeam line. Black level, also good, better when using a negative gain screen like ours, but nowhere near approaching true black. Dark scenes are still going to appear a little washed out, something we notice when switching between our LG OLED and the Premiere while watching Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Absolute black and true to life contrast aside, the detail, sharpness, motion, and just general cinematic quality of the Samsung is impressive, at least when viewing content in standard dynamic range. Switching to HDR content, I found the Premiere to be a little bit hit or miss. Yes, the Sammy can project an HDR image, but let's keep it real. Most projectors struggle with HDR content and the Samsung is no exception. Brightness does appear to increase, but with it, you can just wave goodbye to a lot of dynamic range. Blacks begin to crush and depending on the signal can just completely posterize and turn into a monkey's breakfast. And this was very evident when viewing HBO's new Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon, which was all but unwatchable with HDR engaged. Now, turning off HDR helped a lot. And keeping it off, we watched one of the biggest summer blockbusters of all time, Top Gun Maverick, and the 130 made a very strong case for why projectors shouldn't be counted out just yet, because it was awesome. While the Premiere may utilize a three laser light source, I still see shimmer and rainbow-like effects in the highlights and throughout brightly lit scenes when using a lenticular or ambient light rejecting screen, which is the kind of screen you're most likely to pair with this type of projector. Now, Christie isn't as affected by this, but if you're like me, these anomalies can be distracting and ultimately keep me from being fully immersed in what I'm watching. Both Samsung and LG suffer from this phenomenon. So if you have historically been susceptible to rainbow-like effects, demo the Premiere in a showroom before buying it to see if it's going to be right for you. At around $6,500 retail, the Premiere is pretty premium priced. Add in the cost of even a modest screen like ours, and you're looking at an investment of over $7,000. Go with a more premium screen, one that won't cost you quite as much light output while still allowing you to watch an ambient light, and you may be looking at a system price that easily goes over eight grand. Given the placement limitations of UST projectors, some of you may not be able to even enjoy an image bigger than 100 inches. And if that's the case, you may be better off investing Investing in an 85 or 98 inch flat screen TV, both of which can be had for less than this Samsung setup. Compared to the Epson LS12000B we just reviewed, I think in the right environment and when viewing non-HDR content, the Epson is going to be the better overall projector. Though unlike the Samsung, it's going to require you to place it towards the back of your room versus below the screen, which may result in additional installation and equipment costs. Specifically, moving an electrical outlet closer to the projector's position, not to mention longer HDMI cables, both of which add to the cost of ownership. I could be happy with either the Epson or the Samsung, but if I were to build a dedicated screening room in my my house again, I'd likely go with the Epson over the Sammy. And if I haven't made it entirely clear, I would also choose the Premiere over the LG Cinebeam HU715QW. Just know that the 130 is around double the cost. For those of you shopping last year's Samsung Premiere models, know that the new 130 is a definite improvement all around. So was I wrong to count projectors out in 2022? Well, I enjoyed spending the past few weeks with the Premiere, switching back to our reference LG C2 OLED just made me happier. If I had to choose a projector right now to live with long term, without a doubt, the Premiere 130 would be it because it is arguably the best ultra short throw projector money can buy right now. But it's still a projector. 
And as a result, it has limitations, limitations you don't get with LED or OLED TVs. And given that flat panels are getting larger by the day, not to mention cheaper, I still don't believe buying a projector makes a lot of sense, even though the Premiere 130 from Samsung almost, almost got me to change my tune. All right, so that is now my review of Samsung's The Premiere 130 Ultra Short Throw Projector. Come on, Christy. I know you feel differently, so let me have it. I don't know what you could possibly mean. <laughs> <laughs> look, I actually really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But look, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are still going to give us crap about our room. Mm -hmm. Look, I get it. The walls are white. We have windows. We live in a real place. <laughs> But, you know, it's not a lie that these projector companies show these products in rooms a lot like ours. Look, these product images that you're going to find on Samsung.com or LG, where I don't care. I mean, Anywhere. For crying out loud, Hisense calls their projector a TV. You yeah. know, come on. They're going to try to convince you that this is going to be easy and that you don't have to put a projector in a dedicated room or watch only at night in order to actually be able to see what you're looking at. And maybe for the first time, they aren't entirely full of crap. I mean, mm. at least Samsung's not. Yeah. This is, to me, mm. I think the best looking image we've had from a projector in a room like ours. Yes. I actually prefer it to the Epson that we reviewed. Okay. Even though the Epson, admittedly, is a lot easier to get set up. Yes. If you've got a dedicated theater room, you're you're probably only looking at something like the Epson. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, those are things to consider. Yeah. Sound-wise, this is something that I feel like maybe you didn't... You kind of glossed over a little bit in your review. Yeah, I would say that it's better than, I think, TV speakers in some respects. The problem with it, and the reason why I didn't mention it in the review is because of the placement concerns with respect to the ultra short throw projector, we had to project, we had to put the projector on the floor behind our concrete benches, which obviously destroyed the sound. And so well, that's a good point. Once again, it's like they give you these features and they, they sound like really great selling points, but I can tell you, um, a projector on the floor, even with a 4.2, uh, sound bar built in, if you will, is not going to sound really good because it's firing kind of at your ankles. Put this thing on a table and you get the right sound or the right beam of sound, but now half of the screen's on the ceiling. Yeah. I mean, look, finding any sort of bench, table, uh, media cabinet or any whatever that's going to work with something like an ultra short throw projector mm -hmm. is near impossible. Yeah. I know we sp I probably spent two or three months before mm -hmm. we moved here yeah. trying to find something. And look, just it's just not common. They're really, really difficult to find mm -hmm. because most media cabinets or things that are going to be marketed as something that you would use for, you know, your mm -hmm. media purposes. Yeah. They're just, they are not low profile. No, because you want to be able to put other media components in the damn things. Yeah. And, and even the ones that say they're low profile, they're not really. Yeah. They're lower than others, but they're just still too tall. Um, yeah. So it's just, it's just kind of a pain. Mm -hmm. um, but getting back to the image, mm -hmm. is the, this as good as a TV? No way. Oh, another thing I, another thing you and I kind of talked about that I like about the projector and I, I think it might really be the screen here, mm -hmm. is that it adds a look of grain to movies and shows, which I just, you know, like I, I, maybe it's the romantic in me that I mm -hmm. like that. Um, for example, we've been watching this show. It's new to us. It's been out for a few seasons yeah. called The Great. It's that, that period piece with Elle Fanning, by yeah. the way. Super fun. Yeah. Um, I actually preferred watching that show on the 130 hmm. uh, versus the TV. Uh, I, but I think that it, because it's a period piece, that just works for me. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, the filmic, call it the filmic quality of uh, projection, even digital projection when projecting a digitally captured image, um, it does lend a little bit of, call it nostalgia, the fact that you don't have absolute black. It, it does 
it does um, harken back to, say, Kodak or Fuji film stocks. Um, but I don't know if I would go so far as to say that I enjoyed it as much as when we watched the show on the LG OLED, purely because the second that show goes into more of a dimly lit scene, even you were like, what is, what's going on? Or, you know, this and that. Um, when they're outside in the, in the gardens or out in the hallway, oh, and the sunlight and the sunlight is sunlight's coming her, in through the windows, alabaster skin. Yeah. Oh I mean, my God, that's it was brilliant. just like, mwah, yeah, loved it. That's brilliant. But like with game of Thrones, the second that the whole room's quote unquote lit by candles and, and true to the period, uh, it doesn't take much to realize that projectors just can't keep up. Yeah. I mean, the grain is not there when you watch it. It's not in the image. It's like, it's that, the result of the screen. It's the screen. So yeah. when, if you're watching this show and you want to compare watching it on TV, uh, a TV versus the projector, mm -hmm. you're not going to see it. It's just not there. Yeah. And I, I missed that. Yeah. Um, I thought the projector, the Samsung's projector, uh, colors were really good. Yeah. Um, very, I, they were saturated mm -hmm. and maybe that's not the most accurate image, but I thought it really helped, especially when, when watching something, um, during the day, mm -hmm. you know, you could ease, you could really watch something during the day. Um, I mean, granted you're putting it in the dynamic mode mm -hmm. more than likely. Mm -hmm. Um, but at least it's, 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 you know, it's watchable. Mostly watchable. It's watchable. And to the naked eye while being a cooler image in order to get maximum light output, it still doesn't feel wrong. It is one of the more pleasing dynamic or standard modes that I have ever seen. 100%. And the fact that it is a three laser light source with this projector, as opposed to some of the cheaper, even the cheaper Premiere 120 is not a three laser light projector. And I should have called this out in my review, but the reason why the LG Cinebeam uh, 715 is half the price is because it too is not a three laser light projector. Now LG does make a more comparable Cinebeam in price with three laser. Um, but what that gives you is that, that, um, that purity of light in the colors themselves. Um, and that's really a big thing here. And you really do realize how important that is when all of the primary colors have equal amounts of luminance to them. And that's what makes colors pop. That's what adds to the dimension of the color contrast and why the Samsung undoubtedly comes away with the, the win here in terms of all of the projectors that we've had on this channel so far. NYU, no doubt, preferred it almost straight away. It has to do with that, that three laser light source. That's a very good point. I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I think it's going to be helpful. Now, look, I, I think as the prices of the really big TVs come down, it's going to be harder for the projector market to find a way to stay relevant. Yeah. But I can already hear the pounding of the, your keyboard arguing the opposite. <laughs> look, it's cool. You got, you keep, you keep your projectors. Yeah. Enjoy them. Yeah. Just know that you might, you might be missing out on some advancements. Yeah. Because at these prices, I think you would consider your, your options. Yeah. I mean, it's seven to eight grand. And again, that's like, that's kind of a basic projection setup using this projector. Seven to eight grand. Um, I, I don't recommend using these projectors on walls like this whole, like just throw it on a white wall. Don't do that. You're going to get a really wavy picture because these projectors will expose just how not flush any piece of drywall ever is. Um, and it's even really, on a new build, even yeah. on a new build, it's super distracting. So you need a screen. And so seven to eight grand is your budget to get in at this level. And seeing as how, if you do the math, like we did in the video, you know, for some of you placement is going to negate your ability to even go to about a hundred inches. Well, TCL has a 98 inch TV that is going to be about a thousand dollars less than this. And you will have a lot more easier of a time putting that on your wall or on a cabinet than you will trying to get this projector to match that. And now we're talking about the same size screen, the same immersive cinematic experience, if you will. So, and, and TCL is just kind of first out of the gate. More are coming, you know, more and more 
money and time and resources are being spent on how to get you the biggest screen possible for as little money as possible than I believe is being put into keeping projection alive. Yeah, I would agree. So that's it. That is now our review of Samsung's The Premier 130 triple laser 4K ultra short throw projector. What did you guys think? And my question of the day for you is pretty simple. And that is, what do you guys think of Samsung and LG and just everyone's marketing materials and how they're kind of presenting projection to the masses? Good idea. A little disingenuous. Kind of curious. How do you guys feel about it? Especially you diehard projection nuts. What do you think about it? Uh, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, uh, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here, along with leaving us super thanks and becoming members and just liking and sharing the video. Everything helps and we very much appreciate it. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File, and that's it for me today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound or sight of your system is you. So happy watching, happy listening. We'll see you on the next video.